Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Area Programming using Scala. In this video, we continue talking about graphs. Uh, we've looked at a graph, and we started writing some code that we could use to represent a graph. In the last video, we represented the graph kind of in an object-oriented way. Uh, this is similar to an approach called adjacency lists, where basically the whole graph would be, let's call this graph one, because we're about to make another one would be stored as an array of vertices. So graph one, uh, how about just so or our shorter graph that we have here, four. So this would make an array of four vertices. Of course the problem here we could just do this an array dot fill of new vertex. Okay, so this would make our graph and it would be empty, and then we could put in code to add these edges so that zero has edges going to one and two with weights of two and three respectively, etc. Um, so just to show what that would look like graph one dot edges plus equals an edge that goes to vertex one with, uh, or actually, sorry, um, it goes to graph one sub one, because we made this, the type needs to match, it's actually a vertex, with weight two, And what have I, whoops, graph one, sub zero, dot edges. That would add the first edge, and then, and in fact, thanks to the ability to string together plus equals, we could just type this once, have the edges, so we add one edge that goes to one with a weight of two, one edge that goes to two with a weight of three, and we could have similar lines that set up the edges coming out of one, the edges coming out of two, and the edges coming out of three. So that is one way to represent the graph. A second way to represent the graph is using something called an adjacency matrix. Now the adjacency matrix is in some ways much simpler and much shorter. Uh, it turns out that there are there are advantages and disadvantages to, to each. This approach of using what's basically an adjacency list only keeps values where there actually are edges. The adjacency matrix fills out a full matrix, so it's a two-dimensional array. Uh, or how about I call it graph two. And graph two is going to be equal to an array of arrays of integers. Okay? And it needs to be square so that every uh, row in this is going to represent a vertex and the values in there are the weights of the edges to the, uh, to the other vertices. I'm going to assume here that all of our weights have to be positive. If this were a non-weighted graph, then instead of being integer values in here, I could simply put in Booleans. Uh, so you'd either get yes, it goes there, or, or no, it doesn't. With weights, you just have to specify there is some value that means that there is no edge. Depending upon the nature of the problem, that might vary. Uh, you could wind up doing something like, uh, in some algorithms, you want kind of an infinity. So you'd probably, if it were ints, you'd use ints dot, int dot max value uh, to represent um, a, an edge or a connection that doesn't exist. Uh, but let's see this, I'm going to use zero in this case because we only have positive weights in this graph. So vertex zero does not connect to itself. So I'm going to put that in there. Um, in the next slot, this is its connection to vertex one. There was a weight of two. In its connection to vertex two, there was a weight of three. And it does not connect to vertex three. There is no connection directly from zero to three, comma. And what I want to do 
just copy that, paste, paste, paste. This has to be square, so I need the same number of rows and columns. All the diagonals are going to be zero because nothing connects to itself directly in this graph. In a digraph, it is possible to have a vertex that has just a loop coming off of it and connects directly, but none of mine do. So vertex one leads to two and three with weights of five and four, respectively. So five, four. It does not go back to zero and it does not lead to itself. Vertex two only has one outgoing edge. It goes to three with a weight of two. So it goes to vertex three with a weight of two. And then our last row across here, vertex three only connects back to zero with a weight of one. So that's a one, that's a zero, that's a zero. So the entire information for that graph is contained in this one little matrix. Uh, as you can see, this is a much smaller representation. Um, if this were a non-directed graph, then edges would basically go both ways, in which case this would be symmetric across the diagonal. So the two here would have to be mirrored by a two here if the arrows didn't have uh, directionality, if your, your edges were non-directional. One downside of this, if I had a large number of vertices, but relatively few edges between them, this array is still going to have order n squared elements in it. Uh, but I won't need, I wouldn't need order n squared elements. I'd only need order n if the, if the graph was relatively sparse. So there would be memory overhead. Um, but as long as your graph is fairly dense and you don't have a lot of additional information, for example, this wouldn't work so well for things like rooms in a maze, but for, for most of the problems uh, that you run into with, uh, with graphs, a simple representation like this is quite sufficient. So now that we've seen this as an alternate way to represent it, we're going to come back in the next video and we're actually going to start writing some algorithms that will use a graph and we'll write it so it uses the graph in this format here using the adjacency matrix.